You've chosen to install Ubuntu using a USB flash drive. If you'd like to install Ubuntu using a different method, click this annotation now to go to the selection screen in part 1 of this video series. If you would like more information on Ubuntu and its system requirements, click this annotation now. We're going to begin by downloading the ISO file that we're going to put onto the USB flash drive. So head over to Ubuntu's website at ubuntu.com and then select the download tab at the top. Then click anywhere around download and install. And then make sure you've got the latest version selected. If you're watching this video a long time after I uploaded it, there may be a more recent version than 11.04. So make sure you have the latest version selected. And you've then got to decide whether you want to install the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. Now some of you may be wondering how you decide which version is best for you. Well, there are several things to consider. As of 2008, most new consumer desktop PCs that are sold contain processors from AMD or Intel, which are capable of operating in 32-bit and 64-bit modes. In order to check that your processor has the support for 64-bit, then presuming that you're running Windows at the moment, download, install and run CPU-Z. So if you go to this URL, which is in the description box below, click the link on the side here to download the latest version of CPU-Z. Then click the big download now button in the center. The download will then begin. It's only 3.6 megabytes in size, so it shouldn't take too long. Once it's finished, run the file. Press the run button if any security warnings appear. And then press the next button when the setup window appears. Put a dot in the radio button to accept the agreement. The default is fine, feel free to change it if you wish. Next button, next, next, install. Uncheck this box and then click finish. Now if you go to your desktop, we'll see the shortcut for CPU-Z here, so I'm going to run the program now. Now the way to tell if your processor has support for 64-bit is to look in the box next to instructions. Now if you have an AMD processor, as you can see I have Intel, if you have an AMD processor, uh, AMD 64 will be in this box here if you have support for 64-bit. And if you have an Intel processor, in this box will be EM64T. So if you have either AMD 64 or EM64T in this box, it means that your processor has support for 64-bit. So if your processor doesn't have 64-bit support, then you should use the 32-bit version of Ubuntu. However, if you do have a processor that has 64-bit support, then you have the option to use the 64-bit version. Early 64-bit adopters had some incompatibility problems, most noticeably Java and Flash. However, most issues have now been resolved. So if your processor has 64-bit support, I would recommend installing the 64-bit version of Ubuntu to utilize the full capacity of your hardware. So, if we go back to the Ubuntu download page now, choose either 32-bit or 64-bit with this information in mind, and then press this big Start Download button just here. The download will automatically begin. It's 698 megabytes in size, so it will take quite a while. So I'll just skip that along in this video. Okay, so the ISO files are finished downloading now. If you chose to download the 32-bit version, it will look like this. And if you chose to download the 64-bit version, it will look like this. Now I've decided to move the files to the desktop so that they're easy to locate for the purposes of this video. You can also move them to the desktop if you want so that you can follow the steps exactly as shown in this video, but you haven't got to. So once you've downloaded one of the ISO files, either the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version, head over to this URL, the link's in the description box below, scroll down, and click the download button. It's under a megabyte in size so it should be very quick. Run the file, click run if a security warning appears and then click the I agree button. Then drop down this menu box here and select Ubuntu 11.04. If you're watching this video a long time after I uploaded it there may be a later version here which you can select instead. Keep this box unchecked and then click the browse button over here 
Then we've got to locate the ISO file that you've downloaded. So I place mine on the desktop. So I'm going to click desktop. Then I'm going to left click the ISO file. And then I'm going to click open. At this point, insert your USB flash drive into one of the USB ports on your computer. This USB flash drive must have a capacity of 698 megabytes or more, as that's the size of the ISO file. And please note that all data on this USB flash drive will be removed in this process. So make sure you haven't got any important data on the USB flash drive. So, once you put that in your computer, click the start button, and then click computer. And if it's the only um, removable media that's inserted into your computer at the moment, under the subheading Devices with Removable Storage, you'll be able to see your USB flash drive. And I can tell this is my one as it says the amount free of that, so I know that it's a USB flash drive, and there's in fact nothing in this disk at all. So this is my USB flash drive. I can see in brackets it's got G, so with that information, I can go back to the program, and drop down this box. Now I see G here so I can select that but if you see nothing here, just a white space then you'll have to put a tick in the checkbox next to show all drives and then when you drop it down again it should be there. If it still isn't there uncheck it again, drop it down, still isn't there tick it, drop it down again and it should then be there so it does glitch up a little bit sometimes but Essentially, if you can see the letter that we've just looked at in my computer, then select it. Then put a tick in the checkbox next to Format. And then click the Create button. Don't forget, all the data will be deleted. And that's what this warning message is also telling you. Click the Yes button once you're happy that you're going to delete all the data on the USB flash drive. And it will begin the process. There it goes, it's just begun. Now this can take quite a long time, depending on the speed of your USB port, the speed of your USB flash drive itself. The remaining time takes quite a while to calibrate. As you can see, it's now got to a reasonable time for me. So according to this, it's going to take about three minutes now, but it's getting lower quite quickly. So I'll just skip that along in this video. Ok, it's about to finish now. Ok, almost there. Then it says installation done, process is complete. So when you see that, you know that it's finished. You can then click the close button. Now go down here to safely remove the USB flash drive. Just in case. And then you can remove your USB flash drive from your computer and that can now be used to install Ubuntu. Please click the annotation below to move on to the last video in the series which will show you how to run your removable media at boot up and complete the Ubuntu installation process.